Hi, my name is Mike Scott, Industrial Product Manager for the Modal Shop. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to calibrate an Emerson CSI 2130 Portable Vibration Analyzer with our Model 9110D Portable Vibration Calibrator. Two key innovations about the Portable Vibration Calibrator make it possible to calibrate a Portable Vibration Analyzer. One innovation is the accuracy. The accuracy of the 9110D is plus or minus 3% from 10 hertz to 10 kilohertz, and plus or minus 5% from 5 hertz to 9 hertz. Also, you'll find if you look at the calibration certificate that's supplied with the unit, that it outperforms those specifications. It's a very accurate product, and it can be trusted to calibrate even your most important equipment, your portable vibration analyzer. The other innovation is the ability to ensure the accuracy of the calibrator by testing the reference accelerometer that's inside the shaker, which I'm doing here with an independent voltmeter. By looking at the calibration certificate for the portable vibration calibrator, I can see that in April of 2018, the last time this calibrator was calibrated, the sensitivity of the reference accelerometer was 10.36 millivolts per G. On my voltmeter here, I can see that the sensitivity of the reference accelerometer is hovering between 10.3 and 10.4 millivolts per G. So I know that the reference accelerometer has not drifted and the calibrator is still accurate. Lastly, we've created a new element to our supplied calibration report generation workbook in Microsoft Excel that allows you to key in the values from the portable vibration analyzer to produce a NIST traceable calibration certificate for both linearity and frequency response. The first thing we're going to do in the test is check the accelerometer that's been supplied with our 2130. So let's get started. The accelerometer and portable vibration analyzer work in tandem to produce quality vibration measurements. So the first step to a good vibration analyzer calibration is to test our accelerometer at some critical frequencies. You can see that my model 622B01 accelerometer magnetically mounted to the shaker at 100 Hz at 1G peak is 99.73 millivolts per G. My Emerson 2130 is scaled for a 100 millivolt per G input. So I know that since my accelerometer magnetically mounted to the shaker is very close to 100 millivolts per G, only about 3 tenths of a millivolt off that my 2130 is going to produce some very accurate readings. We also want to test this transducer at some other frequencies of interest. So let's go down to 30 Hertz and check it at 1G peak. You can see that the accelerometer is still 100 millivolts per G. At 10 Hertz, the accelerometer is about 102 millivolts per G at 101.6. And lastly, we should check the accelerometer at the high end of our velocity scale as we'll be taking measurements in the 2130 in velocity, let's slide up to 500 hertz and check it at 1G peak. And you can see that the sensor is still 100 millivolts per G. Now we can move on to documenting the settings in our 2130 machinery health analyzer. Before we calibrate this Emerson 2130 machinery health analyzer, we want to document all of the critical settings such as lines of resolution, window type, and input accelerometer sensitivity. To do this, we need to check our settings. Within the Advanced Analyze tab, I can check the sensor setup, and I can see that both channels are set up for a 100 millivolt per G accelerometer. This is the screen where there is the greatest chance of error. If someone's gone in and changed this to maybe 500 millivolts per G, if the last time they used this device was for a slow speed application. The other thing we want to do is check our settings for Fmax, Fmin, lines of resolution, averaging, and window type, and we'll document that in the calibration report, which we'll show in the next scene. Now that we have tested the accelerometer that we'll be using with the 2130, as well as our 9110 calibrator and documented our settings or reviewed our settings, we need to document that information. This is the report generation workbook supplied with the 9110D, and we click on Vibration Analyzer Data, 
to enter the information that um, that we just accumulated. You can see that I've already entered in my Emerson CSI um, information here, as well as the date of calibration and one year later when the next calibration is due. And I've noted the model number of 2130. Over here, I've noted my analyzer settings, which we showed in the previous scene. Uh, the analyzer was in spectra mode, but our other options here are overall and time waveform. Overall would be used for a basic vibration meter. We've noted our F max and F min in the frequency unit of Hertz. Our other option is cycles per minute. Our lines of resolution and averages are noted here. Our window type is also selected as Hanning, but we also have Hamming, flat top, and uniform. And lastly, we've noted the uh, sensor input sensitivity of 0 0.1 volts per engineering unit. We can also choose millivolts per engineering unit. And that was on the sensor input screen on the 2130. Now that we have all that information documented, we need to document our 9110D, which is shown here. We used model 9110D, serial number 11049, which was calibrated on March 2nd, 2018. And at the time, it was calibrated at 10.36 millivolts per G for the reference accelerometer that's inside the unit. You can find that by looking at your calibration certificate, which is A2LA accredited for your 9110D. You can see mine here, and I draw your attention to the internal reference sensitivity at 100 hertz. On March 2nd, 2018, it was 10.36 millivolts per G. On uh, October 30th, the day this video was shot, the sensitivity was measured to be 10.30 millivolts per G at 100 hertz at 1G RMS. So I've documented that here. And uh, that gives us a percent deviation of 0.58%. You notice that this cell is green. If the deviation were greater than the accuracy tolerance of the shaker, which is 3%, this cell would be red. So if we measured it to be 9.8, for example, millivolts per G, the cell would turn red. And it would let me know that I shouldn't be using this calibrator to test my 2130. We should document our accelerometer that is used, being used with our 2130, which is the uh, IMI sensors 622B01. Serial number is shown there. That was calibrated on the day we shot the video, which was October 30th, 2018. And when it was calibrated, the sensitivity was 99.37 millivolts per G, as you can see here on the calibration certificate. And by the way, the 622B01 is an excellent sensor for route-based predictive maintenance because it receives a full frequency response calibration and has a very tight sensitivity tolerance. So 99.37 on the day it was calibrated, and then we measured 99.73 with the 9110D, and that creates a deviation of just 0.36%. Our tolerance is 5%, as I said, for the 622B01. We can change that if we're using a sensor that has a wider tolerance. The deviation tolerance for the portable calibrator can't be changed. This 3% value is locked in, and that's our accuracy specification for the 9110D. If we had found um, that the sensor had drifted low, for example, uh, the deviation cell would light up red because this deviation is greater than 5%. And that would let us know that we shouldn't be using this transducer for route-based predictive maintenance. But it tested at 99.73, so it's a good sensor for that purpose. And lastly, I've documented the uh, model uh, of my digital multimeter serial number and its last calibration date as well. Now that we have our 2130 vibration analyzer settings documented, as well as the sensitivity of our accelerometer supplied with the 2130 documented on our calibration report and tested. We're going to see how the 2130 performs in a linearity response test. And to do this, we can even mount the accelerometer magnetically, as you see here, or we can use a stud mount. We are now ready to calibrate the Emerson 2130 Machinery Health Analyzer we're going to do a calibration at 30 hertz, which is 1800 cycles per minute, a typical frequency of interest in portable vibration monitoring or route-based vibration monitoring. And we're going to check the analyzer from 0.2 to 1 inch per second for linearity. So a quick five-point test 
in this case just for demonstration purposes in the real application you may want to take more test points our first test point is at 0.2 inches per second peak and you saw that I have acquired data and our overall vibration is at 0.197 inches per second if I scroll the cursor over and center it at the tip of the peak you can see that my amplitude is 0.197 at 30 Hertz so my frequency measurement is correct and my amplitude is very close to the known calibration value of 0.2 inches per second peak. We can now move on to 0.4 inches per second peak and acquire a data again by pressing uh, manual analyze and recording. We'll take our eight averages and once again our measurement turned out very close to the known value of 0.4. Our vibration is centered at 30 hertz at 0.395 inches per second peak. So again, uh, very close and you can see in the measurement that there's no distortion here even though our sensor is magnetically mounted to the shaker our, our vibration is centered upon the frequency of interest of 30 Hertz. Let's check 0.6 inches per second peak which is our known NIST traceable value from the shaker. We'll acquire data once more and for the interest of brevity here, I'm not going to scroll the cursor over, but you can see that our overall vibration is 0.593, and our known vibration on the screen of the shaker itself is 0.6 inches per second peak, and once again, the vibration is centered at 30 hertz. Moving on to 0.8 inches per second peak, we acquire our eight averages, and you can see that the overall vibration is 0.793 inches per second peak. So again, just slightly lower than the uh, calibrated value of 0.8 inches per second peak. Our final test point is one inch per second peak. All of these test points are coming in slightly low, but we know that the accelerometer was 100 millivolts per G at 30 hertz. So the error, and it's a very minimal error, is coming from the 2130. You can see that the overall vibration here at one inch per second peak is measured as 0.992 inches per second peak. So again, very close. All of these known vibration levels from the calibrator and the measured vibration levels from the 2130 will be entered into the calibration report generation workbook to produce a NIST traceable linearity calibration certificate, which we'll show in a moment. Only one step remains to create the linearity test certification for my 2130. I need to enter the known and measured values from my test down here at the bottom of the uh, certificate in the workbook. To save myself some time and some keystrokes, I can import the uh, semi-automated test that I used in my 9110D portable vibration calibrator which is my 2130 linearity route into the document and it warns me to make sure that the frequency or the amplitude units are the same for all test points. In this case I'm doing a linearity certificate so the frequency units are all going to be the same. And now that I've imported the test, this is the uh, same test that you saw me use in the video uh, with my known amplitudes of 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8 and 1 inch per second peak and that scale factor has been uploaded here automatically and the frequency unit in Hertz at these uh, the 30 Hertz frequency. Now all I need to do is enter my measured values that we recorded in the previous segment. 0.593 at uh, 0.6 inches per second. 0.793 was the value at 0.8. 0.992 at 1 inch per second. And at each point, the frequency was 30 hertz. It's very seldom in the units that I've tested that there's an error in the frequency measurement. I've tested the SKF and the Emerson, a Zima DLI, and of course our own Digiducer with the SignalScope Pro uh, iPhone firmware application. Frequency tends to be pretty accurate uh, from what I've seen in the market. Now that all that data is entered, we can create the linearity certificate simply by pressing print linearity certification. 
and you can see that I have a vibration analyzer certification that I can print or save as a PDF and um, it's NIST traceable which is noted at the bottom I'll show you in a moment we have noted all the key settings in our analyzer we've noted our linearity test and our maximum deviation of 1.5 percent uh, which actually occurred at the first test point of 0 0.2 inches per second We've noted our test equipment and the last date of it, its last date of calibration. And we've um, documented the accuracy of that test equipment as well. We have a nice linearity plot. And of course, we have our percent deviations here at each of the test points, known input, uh, and then measured, uh, measured uh, uh, vibration in inches per second peak and the deviation there. Uh, this calibration is traceable to NIST, and we use the ISO 16063 Part 21 standard to test our piezoelectric transducer. And we can now uh, make a PDF of this certificate or print it. Um, however, we would like to store it uh, just in case we get audited. And that completes the test. You may have noticed during the course of the test that I wasn't manually changing the amplitudes or the frequencies. As I turned the dial, the frequencies changed quite a bit. They changed from 10 hertz to 30 hertz to 100 hertz and so on. Those tests were pre-programmed into the calibrator using our CalRoute option, which is now available on all units. For more information on CalRoute, please consult our webpage as we have videos on how to program repetitive tests into the calibrator, as well as how to execute those tests with the Model 9110D Portable Vibration Calibrator and the Model 9100D Portable Vibration Calibrator. Thanks for watching.